You know, I think the real focus at this point in camp is on consistency and performance. That's really what defines success. And I think it's more and more difficult as you grind your way through camp. Now we started school today, so that's another sort of attraction uh, that the players have to deal with. And, um, you know, so can you go out there every day and do the things you need to do to improve and not be satisfied because you had a good day yesterday uh, I'm entitled to take it easy today. Uh, and if I had a bad day yesterday, I'm going to bounce back today and do something great. Uh, but to be able to do it every day. Um, you know, and I, I think that mindset of your team is so important. Um, you know, high achievement motivation and low anxiety is really, really important. And you got to be able to shut down all the external factors out there whether it's number one, we're going to be in the playoffs. I haven't do, done anything to deserve anything. You know, we're honored to, you know, be recognized where we are. Uh, but this particular team uh, has, you know, they've got to earn it. Uh, they've got to go out there and earn it every day. And players cannot focus on outcomes. Uh, they need to continue to focus on the things they need to do to get the outcome. Uh, they don't need to have a lot of fear of failure, like they're going to disappoint somebody. They got to focus on what they got to do to be the best players they are, whether it's individually or collectively as a team. Um, so, you know, this is the team. I think this is the thing. These are the things that sort of define your team. Uh, and, you know, camp is a great time to get that done. And I think we made, you know, some some progress. Uh, I know you asked me about the scrimmage this week and. You know, obviously last week we were just trying to do some basic stuff and this week there'll, you know, be, be you know, more game-like type situations where, you know, we, we sort of play this a little bit like an exhibition game uh, so we can actually see who can go out on the field and execute uh, when the coaches aren't telling them what to do. Uh, so, you know, this this will be uh, a little more freedom for the players. Uh, we'll also work on you know, game day coaching organization, you know, from that standpoint. So uh, we're sort of looking, you know, forward to that. But uh, the bottom line is, is we need more guys to develop consistency and performance so they can play winning football. And we have more depth on our team. Uh, we have more competition on our team. Uh, and I think that'll make us better. Um, you know, two guys that um, have not been able to practice and uh, is, you know, I mentioned Kendall sprained his ankle. Uh, DeMarco Hellams also sprained his ankle. Um, and those guys will be out. It'll be day to day, but they'll probably be out for a little while. But we hope to get them back, you know, shortly. OK, with that, we'll start with Charlie Potter. Go ahead, Charlie. Hey, Coach, you, you mentioned the difference between the first and, and second scrimmage. I guess just for you, what's the, the main difference you're looking for in terms of just the players on the field? Well, who can go out and execute? You know, I mean, we're going to call a play on offense. Who, who can go get in the formation? We want to go fast. You know what you're doing. You can be responsible to do your job on a consistent basis, and you can be trusted and counted on by your teammates to be able to do that. Uh, if we got to tell a guy what to do and he doesn't know what to do, then, you know, he's got a ways to go. We're going to keep working with him, trying to get him there. Get him there. But uh, I think that's, that's the number one thing we want. How many guys can actually go out there and have the confidence and maturity to execute and do their job on a consistent basis uh, and do it with effort, do it with toughness um, and, you know, sustain it regardless of the circumstances in the game and regardless of what happened on the last play. So, um, you know, that's, that's the number one thing. So I know that a lot of you guys worry about what play we call, what defense we call, what coverage we play or whatever, but, you know, it really comes down to execution of what you do. And uh, that's what we're going to be really focused on, who can execute. We'll go to Michael Casagrande. Michael? Yeah, just want to ask about Jamison Williams. How has he fit in with the offense so far, and what does he bring to the table? Yeah, he's done great. You know, he's a really good player. Um, he's got, you know, really good speed. Uh, you can tell he's an experienced player. He's played at a high level against good competition. And uh, he's very bright. So he's picked up on things, learned the offense very quickly. Um, so we're encouraged with what he's done. And uh, I'm sure he's going to make a really positive contribution to our team and, you know, be a featured guy in some ways. Go to Cecil Hurt. Coach, one group we didn't get to ask about 
immediately after the scrimmage with the running back. Um, how did they perform on Saturday? Is it still a competition there? What's the situation? Yeah, there's a lot of competition there. I mean, I'm really pleased with, you know, the guys at that position. B-Rob has, you know, had a really good camp, uh, did a nice job in the scrimmage. You know, Jace, uh, Roy Dell, um, Trey Sanders, you know, all those guys uh, really um, have are been playing well and are playing well. And um, so I, I'm pleased with the progress that all those guys you know, have, you know, shown and, you know, made uh, in the spring as well as in camp. So, um, you know, we're excited about that position. We'll go to Nick Kelly. Nick, when you're evaluating uh, corners and cornerback battles, what, what kind of things do you look at? Uh, well, I think there's three things that are important when you play defensive back. Um, number one, you got to be able to tackle. Number two, you got to be able to play the deep part of the field. Number three, you got to be able to play man to man. You know, those are the three critical factors for a DB at any position. Uh, you can't get off the field on third down if you can't deny the ball, which means you got to play man to man at some point in time. You give up big plays if you can't judge the ball in the deep part of the field and then you're the last line of defense. So if you can't tackle, uh, they're going to make big plays as well. So uh, those are the critical factors that we look at for DBs. And, um, you know, so that's what we look at for in recruiting. And uh, that's what we kind of try to develop on the field with our players and the drill work that we do. Okay, we'll go to Tony. Tony Scalas, go ahead. Hey, Nick, how much has the experience on defense helped with key situations like like third down situations? Yeah, well, I think, you know, one of the big issues, you know, last year on our team being fairly young um, was we made a lot of mental errors, especially in the first half of the season. And um, I think that was knowledge and experience. So I think when you have more experienced players, uh, I think hopefully you cut down on, you know, those mental errors that actually you know, help people make make plays against us. And um, uh, so I think that's the key to the drill. And, um, you know, we still have to have good players at every position and there's still a lot of competition at every position. And, um, you know, so we're trying to get more and more guys to get to, the, to where they have the confidence, the knowledge and experience to be able to execute on a consistent basis. Okay, we got a couple more. We'll go to Charlie Potter again. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, Coach, I just want to ask you about one individual in, in Brian Branch. Just how have you seen him progress? And is he a guy with his versatility that can play really all over that secondary for you? Well, yeah, and, and I think that um, he's, he's had a really, really good camp. He's done a really good job. And maybe we've asked him to do a lot of different things. Um, you know, we played him at star. We played him at corner. We played him at money. We played him at safety. So... Uh, he's played every position in the secondary. And, um, but I think in fairness to him, uh, we need to put him someplace and get him some reps at that position. So, you know, he can feel really good about playing fast uh, because when he's confident that way, he's a real playmaker. We'll finish up with Jacob Harrison. Go ahead, Jacob. Hey coach, a lot has been made about Henry Toto and his addition to the linebacker core, but what's uh, kind of the growth track been for his counterpart? Christian Harris, both as a leader and as a player at the linebacker position. Yeah, well, I think what Henry's done is let Christian play his more natural position, which is will and money. He can play Mike, and he's a very good Mike. Um, but Henry's a signal caller. He's been a signal caller. Having experience at doing that is very helpful. It's less of a burden on other players on the team. I think it you know, helps everybody uh, on the team when you have good communication, especially at the linebacker position. You know, it's a little bit like the quarterback on offense. So, and Henry has done a really, really good job of that. Uh, Christian is capable of doing that. And we have every confidence that if he needs to do it, he can do it. But I think the combination of those two guys, both being able to do it is very, very helpful, especially when it comes to making adjustments and fit and runs and being in the right spot and coverage. So. Um, it's been a very, very positive thing for us. All right, Coach, thank you for your time. All right, thank you.